Okay, um, I decided to break this video into two different parts. Um, this next part, we're going to focus on conversions that actually take multiple uh, kind of steps. Uh, you'll find that these, we, we do have to make the pit stops in between. Okay, so let's look at this first one. All right, five weeks, two hours. So the very first step is to always draw out your roadmap. What are you starting with? We're starting with weeks. And what are we going to? We're going to hours. Okay. So the first question is, do we need to make any pit stops? Well, we ask ourselves, do you know the relationship between weeks and hours? Okay. Um, do you know how many hours are in a week? And the answer to that is probably no. So you have to be thinking to yourself, okay, I'm starting with weeks. What could I go to next to get to hours eventually? Okay. Well, weeks we could go to, think about that, we could go to days. Okay. We know that there are seven days in a week. Right. Then the next question is, do we need to make any more pit stops? Okay. Do we need to stop anywhere in between days and hours? And to answer that, we ask, do you know the relationship between hours and days. And you should say yes. Okay, there are 24 hours in a day. So we're going to write these conversions out. So one week is equal to seven days. Okay, and you notice I'm following the order here. Weeks came first, so I wrote one the one week and then days. And then days, so one day is equal to how many hours? 24 hours. Okay. We always do this first. Okay, it really helps. All right, now that we have the roadmap and the numbers, we can start setting up the fraction. So I started with five weeks. Write it as a fraction. Okay, any fraction we can write over one. And we're going, let's see, okay, so the next fraction is we need to cancel weeks. We'll look at your roadmap after weeks. Okay, we said we we're going to days. So if weeks is on top, we need weeks on bottom, and then afterward we said that we were going to days. Okay. Do we want days? The answer no. So how do we cancel days? Well, days in the numerator, we need days in the denominator. What did we say comes after days? We said we were going to hours. Is hours the unit that we want? Yes, it is. Circle it and equal to sign. Now we can fill in the numbers. One week is equal to seven days. Uh, one day is equal to 24 hours. Okay. Now let's look at canceling our units. Weeks over weeks cancels. And again, just really quickly, if you end up with something of weeks over weeks, and again I'm abbreviating, you know that that's going to cancel. Just like A over A cancels. 8 over 8 cancels. Anything over itself is going to cancel. Okay. Days over days cancels, leaving us with just the only units that are left is hours and they're in the numerator. Okay. Now just multiply your numbers going straight across. So all these numbers in the denominator, go ahead and multiply, 5 times 7 times 24, and I believe you get 840. 1 times 1 times 1, 1. So the answer to this one, five weeks to hours, five weeks is equivalent to 840 hours. Okay, so that would be the answer to this one. Okay, let's look at the next example. Uh, 36 days, two seconds. All right, first step, make your roadmap. Okay. And you recognize that this is a unit conversion because you have one unit and it's asking for a different unit. So we're starting with days and we're going to seconds. All right. Do you know how many seconds are in a day? Chances are, no, you don't. So we need to ask yourself, okay, what pit stops do we need to make? And we start with days. What unit would get us a little bit closer to, second, to seconds? Okay. We know days to what? Days to hours. Okay, we know how many hours are in a day. Now, do you know how many seconds are in one hour? Answer, no. Okay, but we do know how many 
minutes are in an hour, right? So the next question, do we need to make any more pit stops? Do you know how many seconds are in a minute? The answer should be yes. So now we're done with our roadmap. Now we can fill in numbers. So one day, one day is equal to 24 hours. Um, now we have hours. So one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Again, we need the relationships for each one of these pit stops. And then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Okay. Now that we have the roadmap and our numbers, we can start our fraction. So again, we just write this as a fraction. 36 days, any number we can write as a fraction over 1. We want to cancel days, so we have to multiply it by a fraction that has days in the denominator. Look at your roadmap. After days, we said that we were going to hours. So that's how we know what to write next. Again, that's a common question. Is how do I know what to write next? Look at your roadmap up above. That's why we do it. Okay. Now, do we want hours? The answer, no. So we need to multiply it by another fraction. Hours on top, we need to put hours on bottom to cancel it. What did we say comes after hours? We said we were converting to minutes next, so that's why minutes goes in the numerator. Do we want minutes? The answer, no. So we need to multiply it by another fraction. How do we cancel minutes in the numerator? We need to have minutes in the denominator. What did we say comes after minutes? We said we we're going to seconds. So seconds comes next in the fraction. Does our answer want seconds? The answer, yes. Circle it and write equals because you're done with the fractions. Okay. Now, take a second to fill in the numbers. Okay, so hit pause, fill in the numbers. Once you have them filled in, then you can unpause it. Okay, you should have the numbers filled in. So we had one day is equivalent to 24 hours. Um, one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. One minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. Okay. Now let's look at canceling our units to make sure that we set it up correctly. We have days over days, so those cancel. We have hours over hours, so those cancel. We have minutes over minutes, so those cancel. Okay. Really quickly, and you don't need to write this down, if you had something like this, 36 days over 1, and then you had 1 day, 24 hours, Again, you don't need to write this down. Find the mistake. What's wrong with this? Because I oftentimes see students do this and they're like, oh, days cancels with days. Okay. Do those actually cancel out? The answer is no. Okay, because they're not, it's not days over days. It's not like D over D and those cancel. It's D times D. That doesn't cancel out. Okay. So when, don't just go canceling units. Make sure that they actually cancel because you have one in the numerator and one in the denominator. All right, now we can finish this. So just multiply all of these numbers in the numerator, okay? And then you have seconds. And then multiply all the numbers in the denominator, which is, all, they're all just one, so that's easy. So your answer for this is three, one one zero oh, four zero oh, zero. Oh. Okay, put commas in. Do that. Some of you are still struggling where to put commas. Okay, you do it after the first three, next three. So, thirty-six days is equivalent to equal to three million one hundred and ten thousand four hundred seconds. Make sure you include the units. Okay. All right, next example. Um, this one is a much tougher problem, so really pay attention. You might have to rewind it, watch again. If you still have questions, make sure you write a question mark and ask them in class. Okay. So we have this. Now, in the thing, I, in, in the notes, I gave you what these stand for. Okay. What does this one little mark stand for? 
Okay, that stands for feet. If you're interested in any type of engineering someday, okay, or architectural design, anything like that, this is how things are abbreviated on blueprints. Okay, so the one mark stands for feet, and then the two marks stands for inches. Okay, I use this all the time when I did construction work. That's something you should really memorize. Okay, all right, <clears throat> we have two units. We have feet and we have inches, and we want to get all of it to centimeters. Now there are a couple, so that's one tricky part, that you have two different units and you're trying to go to centimeters. The other tricky part is that feet and centimeter, or uh, feet and inches are in the US system, and centimeters are in the metric system. Okay, So we're converting from the US standard, the customary, to the metric system. So what I want you to do is right now go to page two of your notes. That little table at the top of page two, if you look at the title, again if you're not there yet, flip now, it says that they're the conversions between US standard and metric system. Okay. Now we want to go to centimeters. Find out what other units we know have a relationship with centimeters. Okay, and you should see it, and you should actually know this, that 2.54 centimeters is equivalent to what? To one inch. So, if we can get both of these things to inches, then we can easily convert that to centimeters. Okay. Now, the 10 is already in inches, so do we need to convert that to inches? Answer, no. What's the only thing that we need to convert to inches? The five feet. Okay, so we're going to do a quick roadmap. We're starting with feet, and what are we going to? Okay, you may be thinking, oh, we're going to centimeters. Not yet. All we're trying to do is get this five feet to inches. Okay, once we know the inches, then we can convert that to centimeters. Okay, so do you know the relationship between feet and inches? You should. One foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay. So let's convert. 5 feet, okay, and make sure you're writing all the way up the left of your paper. Write it over 1 as a fraction. How do you cancel feet? Well, feet's on top. You need feet in the denominator. And then we said according to our roadmap, we were going to inches. That's what we want. Circle it in equals. Okay. So now 1 foot is equal to 12 inches. Feet cancel. 5 times 12 is 60 inches. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. Now would we just convert that 60 inches to centimeters? Would we just convert that 60 inches to centimeters and call it good? Okay. Look back at the original problem. We just converted 5 feet to inches, but what else did we have? We already had the 10 inches. We cannot forget, I'm telling you right now, this is the number one mistake students make. They forget to add this back in. Okay? This person, if we're talking about the height of a person, this person is 5 feet 10 inches. You have to add that 10 inches back in. Okay? So how tall is this person in inches? They are 70 inches tall. Okay? Again, you take your feet, convert it to inches, and then you add the inches that are already there. Okay, So this person is 70 inches. Does that answer our question? Okay, so we have our 70 inches. Now we need to convert that to centimeters. So let's do a road map. Again, we're starting with inches. We're going to centimeters. Do we need to make a pit stop? Do you know the relationship between inches and centimeters? You should know that relationship. One inch is equal to, say it, write it, 2.54 centimeters. Okay, So 70 inches over one. We want to get rid of inches. Inches on top, inches on bottom. Okay, what did we see it comes next after inches? Well, we said we were going to centimeters. That's how we know what to write on top. Okay, 
Um, that's what we want. Circle equal to sign. Now we can fill in numbers. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Inches over inches cancels. 70 times 2.54, I believe, gives you 177.8 centimeters. Don't forget the units. Okay? All right, before you get to class, I um, want you to do, there is an example four problem, there's an example five problem, okay? And then right below that, there's a you try, number five and number six. So again, and I'll write this out for you, okay? So before you come to class, you need to do example four, example five, the U try, you need to do numbers 5 and 6. Again, before you come to class. Okay? All right. And again, this is a tough objective. If you're struggling, if you're stuck, you need to make sure that you go back, rewind it, and rewatch the examples again.